All right, so we already, in class, we were discussing how to find a line of best fit. And we've already touched on, in section 2.2, how you can use linear regression on the calculator to find the line of best fit. But we want to go into more detail about why it is the line of best fit. So you understand where the calculator is coming from and what it's doing. You need to be comfortable with uh, looking at data. Back on page 90 in example 1, they used these two coordinates. That was the year and the CPI index. Uh, yeah, I put CBI, but that's totally different. That's uh, from the Mentalist TV show. Um, you know, so, but you, many of you probably don't know that. Anyway, so here are the coordinates. We know how to find slope, rise over run. They got 40 over 9. Of course, we know that you would take one of your coordinates. I picked the first one and plug it back in to find the simple y-intercept, which you've done a lot of that before, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. So that is a line of best fit, but that is not the line of best fit. Um, one other thing you need to know is if you take um, if you take a line of best fit and you plug in all the data values, you will get different numbers than what you got in the recorded data. And the reason that happens is because when you're looking at a set of data, let's say here we have a bunch of data values and the line of best fit goes through there, let's just say that was it, you'll notice that the line of best fit has a point, and here let me zoom in on this so you can see the point I'm trying to make, that there is a distance between the coordinate and the line, a vertical distance. Sometimes the points are above the line and sometimes the points are below the line, so that vertical distance could be a positive number or a negative number, but the points don't all sit on the line, and since the points don't sit all on, all on the line, they have a difference from that value. Now each one of these dots right here is called an, a, a data value, but it has an observed y value. That's what you would actually record in the data. Obviously there's an x value that goes with it. But the point that sits right on the line of best fit, which is not a data value, it may be or it may not be, has what we call a predicted y value. It's predicted because you're using the line of best fit to get that y value. Well, if you take the observed value, y value, and you subtract the predicted y value, we get what we call a deviation. Now we've seen that term before when we were talking about one variable data and a deviation in one variable data was when you took the data point and you subtracted the average. Well, we're now in the two variable world and so we have to take the distance to the line, the distance to the line. Now there is another word um, for deviation residual and there's another term that also means the same thing um, commonly referred to uh, I think by flow rider if I'm saying his name right okay um, I know I was in a group in college called Georgia and uh, but you know flow rider uh, doesn't he talk about raising your hands up in the air okay and I think that has to do with um, observed y values minus predicted y values. That's why he's referring to errors in his song. So um, I just thought some of you don't know the, these things, and so you know you might sound ridiculous at parties, and I don't want you to feel that way. So I thought I, you know, I'm always looking out for you guys, always wanting to help you. So anyway, uh, we have a set of data. Okay, this is the same set of data that you'll find in the textbook. Uh, let's see if I can get back out far enough so you can see them all. Uh, you might want to get them entered in your calculator, and you know, if I was a smart math teacher, I probably would have entered them in myself before now, but uh, but I didn't, so I better type quickly. 80, 85, 88, 
93, and 94. Okay, hopefully I didn't screw that up. And then I can go over to list 2 in my calculator. And what do we got? 82, enter 108. 118, please tell me I'm not going to mess the data up because that would really screw things up. 136, 140, 145, and 148. Please make sure that your data matches in list 1 and list 2 uh, to these values. Otherwise, the calculations will get messed up. Okay, so let's use the line of best fit that we just found right over here. We know that this is a line of best fit. We know it's not the line of best fit. So um, I'm going to come up to the top of list three, and we're actually going to find the predicted y values. OK, so in list three, we want predicted y values. And I'm writing it down right now so you can see it in a minute. How do you find those predicted y values? Well, you come to your equation. So we have 4.4 repeating. I'm just going to go 4.4, a few of those. That's all I need. I'm not going to go crazy here. Um, maybe someday, but not now. And then I'm going to use list 1. Why am I using list 1? Because those are my original x values. My original x values are in list 1. Minus 269.7. And a few of those will work okay, to help us. And these right here are called predicted y values. Clearly, you can see that 82 and 85.778 are not the same values. So what we know by looking at this is that this particular y value is below that one. So it's going to have a negative deviation. So let's take a look. What are those deviations? So, so right now, we have gone through the process. We have our x values in this list. We have our observed y values in list 2. And now we have our predicted y values in list 3. And we did that by using, just like you saw on the calculator, by using the model. OK, now, in the fourth list, we want to find the actual deviations. OK? And we know that that's the observed y values minus the predicted y values. So that's pretty easy to do. You're going to come up to the top. And we're going to say L2 minus L3. Now, try to um, refrain from memorizing L2 minus L3 because in doing that, you are not going to really understand what you're talking about. Okay? You're, you're trying to memorize something for a test. I really want you to understand what the observed y value minus the predicted y value is. That that is called an error or deviation or residual. And you know that you're subtracting to find the difference or the distance between. Well, some kids just want to memorize stuff, and it really doesn't help you get the overall picture of what's going on, especially when we have the quarterlies and tests and final exams. So just like I said, that value is underneath that value, so its deviation would be negative. And um, 118 is underneath, and 124 is underneath, and 131 is above, so it has a positive deviation. Okay, because it's above the line. Okay, and um, now we have a process in our book called the sum of squared errors. The sum of squared errors. Now, obviously, I would love if I let me write that down. Sum of squared errors. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, we know that the errors are in list four. These are the errors. We want the sum of all of those values, but we want them squared. If you add them up right now, you're going to get zero. Doesn't help me, right? Just like in the one variable case, if you add up a bunch of deviations, you get zero. So in order to fix the problem, we square them all making them positive, then we can look at what's going on with them. Well, the sum of squared errors for this, well, how do I do that? I'm going to do one bar stats of list four, one bar stats of list four. So I'm going to quit out of this, jump back to the home screen. Remember, just like stat, calculate, one bar stats, list four. Got to tell it which list. So when I hit enter, I see this information. 
Now, which one of these pieces of information in this chart is, takes every one of the data values in list four, squares them all, and adds them all up? Hopefully, you understand that that's sigma x squared, 33.8. So I'm going to write that number down for this, 33.802. All right, so there is what's called the sum of squared errors. All right, now go back in your calculator. Go back in your lists. And I know several of you are going to panic right now because I'm going to clear out list three and list four. It's almost like I'm going back to the beginning. And you're probably saying to yourself, he just got rid of all that stuff. Why did we get rid of it all? Well, because I'm going to do this process again, but... This time, I'm going to do it with the line of best fit instead of a line of best fit because I want to show you something. So, stat, calculate, fourth one in the list, linear regression. Tell it where your lists are. List one, comma, list two, comma being above the seven. All right. So, this is the best line of fit that we can possibly come up with. So I'm going to write these, the, the slope of the y-intercept down. I'll probably round it off to the thousands, okay? So y equals 4.76. Oops, no, let's just go y equals 4.77. Oops, where's my decimal? Okay, because it rounds up. Um, and then uh, minus 299.249. Okay, so there's my equation. So we need to go in to our lists, go back up to the top of list three, and we're going to find the new um, predicted y values for this line, since this is a better line than the other one. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, 4.77 times list one, right, because list one is where my x's are, minus 299.249, enter. Okay, so those are all my deviations, or I'm sorry, those are all my predicted y values. Now I need to go over to list four and find my deviations. Okay, observed y values minus predicted y values. And we use list two and list three and subtract them in the order you see them, right? Because we have the observed ones there and the predicted ones here. It's not like I even have to change the order of anything. So these are now my errors or my deviations. And we want, what do we want? Do we want that? No? See how I used that second enter feature a couple times and it got me back to one of our stats list four? I don't even have to read. I have this instruction already entered in. I changed all the values in list four, so guess what? I'm going to get a new value. And when I look, I see the sum of squared errors is The method of least squares. Now, I, I know you, I promise you, you can get a more complicated explanation when you get to AP stats. One of the points that's on every line of best fit, or should be on every line of best fit, is X bar, Y bar. Every line of best fit has X bar, Y bar on it. Okay? I would know that. That's an important fact. This point is on every line of best fit. Okay, average of the x's, average of the y's. But your calculator is going through a process to minimize those sum of least squares, the sum of the squared errors. And when it finds the smallest one, it calculates this and says, here's your winner. Here is your best line to go through the data. So we can find all kinds of line of best fit by hand, but I promise you, every time we do that, the sum of squared errors will always be higher than this one. This one will generate the smallest one for this data set. Try to look at the example in the book to see if... Oh, this point here, by the way, is called the center of gravity. Center of gravity. Now, if I were you, and I wanted to find the center of gravity fast, 
I think I would look for something called two bar stats and then you put in like list one comma list two and see if you can find X bar Y bar even for this set of data okay so I want you to do that you know stat calculate look for two bar stats and then give it list one comma list two and it will find you the center of gravity now you may have to scroll down but you need to look for it you need to find it okay also and I will be asking about, you know, because that point is on every single line of best fit, I will be asking you for the center of gravity. But it's a real easy thing to calculate, obviously, because you have the machine to do a lot of that heavy lifting for you. I need you to ask me a question in class. I need you to ask me on Monday or on the next day you see me the difference between these. Okay, interpolation and extrapolation. Okay, because I got a funny story to tell you, and uh, I think some of you might have already heard it, but we shall find out. Hopefully, I can enlighten you on what interpolation and extrapolation mean. Talk to you later.